By now, you've probably heard of Alibaba, the Chinese internet giant that's able to reach millions upon millions of previously unreachable Chinese consumers. The company went public this month on the New York Stock Exchange and became one of the most valuable in the world. And Alibaba is just getting started. Everything about the Alibaba story is unconventional, beginning with its founder, Jack Ma, who gained global celebrity status these past 10 days, as his image became ubiquitous on business news channels and media outlets across America. We got to know Jack Ma before the onslaught, beginning over a year ago in China, where he talked with us about his relationship with the Chinese government and his unorthodox business philosophy, which surprisingly gives shareholders almost no say over how he runs the company. If you want to invest in us, we believe custom number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. If they don't want to buy it, that's fine. If they regret, they can sell us. In the US, the shareholder is usually first. Yeah, and I think they were wrong. The shareholder, good, I respect them, but they're the third, because if you take care of the customer, take care of the employees, shareholder will be taken care of. Ma's unconventional view didn't stop Wall Street from pouring $25 billion into his company now listed on the New York Stock Exchange as Baba. It's an internet shopping behemoth, a collection of online marketplaces where buyers and sellers connect to do business. Most of the company's money comes from advertising and small transaction fees. On its most popular website, Taobao, users talk to each other, barter and engage in a way that doesn't happen on American e-commerce websites. And Alibaba says there are close to a billion products for sale. If I'm buying a house, I can do everything from find an architect yeah. to buying doorknobs yeah. to furnishing the entire thing from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. What else? You can buy anything it's, as long as it's legal. Anything. Five, six years ago, you weren't even making a profit. In fact, in 2002, you made $1 yeah. in profit. Yeah. And today you make how much? Billions. Billions of dollars. Yeah. yeah. It's now the biggest e-commerce firm in the world, dwarfing the combined sales of Amazon and eBay. And Alibaba has helped create hundreds of millions of internet consumers, a whole new social class in communist China, people who never had access to modern commerce before Jack Ma came along. And now you have 500 million yeah. registered users. Yes. It's um, only, yeah, only like a little bit more than 40% of China population. And we need more. We have uh, over 100 million people visiting the site shopping every day coming. And uh, it's just uh, a beginning. When Jack Ma dreamed up Alibaba in 1999, the online world looked nothing like it does today. The most popular search engine was Yahoo, not Google. There were no iPods, iPhones, or iPads. Only four out of 10 American homes had internet connections. And the World Wide Web barely reached all the way to China, where retail stores were rare outside the big cities. For most of the country, there was no such thing as package delivery or credit cards. The only way to buy anything was face to face and in cash. When we started the e-commerce, nobody believed that China would have e-commerce because people believe on the guanxi, face-to-face, -face and all kinds of uh, uh, network in traditional ways. There's no trust system in China. He had to overcome centuries of tradition by showing Chinese buyers and sellers that they could trust Alibaba with their money in this new virtual world. He did it by guaranteeing the transactions and creating his own payment system, an escrow account where Alibaba holds the buyer's money until the goods are delivered. Every day we finish more than uh, 30 million transactions. And that means that there, you are buying things from somebody you have never seen. You are giving products to the person you have never met. 
and there are some guys you never know that he's going to take your products to that place, to that person. I want to tell the people that the trust is there. Because it's all about it's trust. It's all about the trust. Now anyone, rich or poor, with access to the internet and something to sell, can connect with hundreds of millions of potential customers on one of Ma's websites. Ordinary people in China, who never had a way to do business with each other before, today have a stake in the online world. That idea was revolutionary. It created millions of jobs and made Jack Ma a hero to millions of Chinese. This is your old stomping ground, right? Yep. We met Jack Ma in Hangzhou, an ancient city in southeastern China famous for its beauty. This is where he grew up poor in the 1960s, during the chaos of Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution, when the country was cut off from the West. Then in 1972, Richard Nixon came to his hometown. It was the first visit by a U.S. president to communist China, and the city became a mecca for foreign tourists. Through them, 12-year-old Jack got his first glimpse of a world beyond China. The name Jack was given by an American tourist. He told us how he taught himself English, walking up to foreigners and offering free tours in exchange for free lessons. Unlike many successful Chinese entrepreneurs, Jack Ma never studied in the US. He also had no status, money or connections. The only other way to get ahead in China was education, and he failed the college entrance exam twice. My parents do not want me to take examinations again. Because they didn't want you to fail again. Yeah, they believe I will fail again. How did that affect you? That's a good question. Nobody asked me how that affected me. That really affected me a lot. I, um, I failed for the first time, and um, then I asked for looking for jobs. I went to interview jobs for about 10, 15 times, and all rejected by people. Why did everyone reject you? I was not that the standard that normal people like. Because you normal. were small? I was small. And skinny? Skinny, not handsome, and uh, terrible uh, the way I talk, and they, they, they probably just don't like it. Ma made it into college on his third try and became an English teacher. With no computing or engineering background, he's an unlikely tech titan. But he says he was captivated by the internet from the moment he first saw it in 1995, when he came to the U.S. as a translator. I never touched keyboard before. I never using computer before. And I say, what is internet? He said, Jack, you know, search whatever you want on the internet. I said, how can I search? What is search me? He said, just the type. I said, I don't want to type. <laughs> computer is so expensive in China, I don't want to destroy it. He said, it's not a bomb, just the type. <laughs> so I typed the first word called beer. At that time, very slow, come out the American beer, Japan beer, and the German beer, but no China beer. So I was curious, and it was type China. No China, no data. Came back to Hangzhou with one dollar in my pocket, scared, worried, and I came back and uh, I said, uh, I want to do something called internet. His first two ventures failed. Four years later, he convinced some friends and former students most of whom had never used the internet, to invest in him and his vision for Alibaba. With just over $50,000 in seed money, the company was born. Today, it's valued at $231 billion and is headquartered in Hangzhou on a sprawling state-of-the-art campus that rivals any in Silicon Valley. Ma's personal fortune makes him the richest man in China and one of the most influential. It's impossible to run a business on Alibaba's scale without official blessing. You were quoted saying, when you have millions of small companies using your site and billions of dollars in transactions every day, the government cares. Yeah. So what do they care about? They care that I can stabilize the country. I told the government, if people have no jobs, you are in trouble. Government will be in trouble. My job is to help more people have jobs. So usually when people succeed in China, they either have connections, 
political connections or they come from a wealthy family. You had neither. No. <clears throat> and you've done this without interference from the government? Well, I never got one cent from government. I get n never get one cent from China banks. So I'm very independent. That was true when Alibaba began, and most of its capital still comes from abroad. But more recently, some of its smaller investors have included institutions with ties to China's ruling elite. Alibaba has also benefited from Chinese government policies that make it difficult for foreign competitors to operate there. Ma explained how he walks a fine line with Beijing. I have a very strict talk to my team. So never ever do business with government. In love them, don't marry them. So we never do projects for government. If they come to us and say, Jack, can you help with this? Good, I will introduce a friend to you who are interested in doing that. Or if you want me to do it, I do it free for you. Just one, next time don't come to me again. So because of that, we keep very good re love relationship with the government. When we pressed Ma, he acknowledged there are times he has to bow to Chinese authorities, though he was surprisingly frank about a subject that's also sensitive among U.S. Internet companies, including Google, Facebook and Yahoo. You gather more information on Chinese citizens than anyone else in the country. You mean me? Yes. Yeah. So when the Chinese government comes knocking on your door asking for that information, how do you handle that? What do you do? Okay. We have a very strict process working with the government. If they want to do it, it's related with the national security, we work together. Any country, any citizen, anywhere, you have to work. I believe Google has to do If it's the national security of the USA, Facebook has to do it, Alibaba will definitely have to do it. What worries some investors is the possibility that China could take control of the company and all of its assets at any time. And then there's Alibaba's unusual corporate structure, which puts all the power in the hands of Jack Ma and a small group of insiders. First of all, I want you to put on this. But there's another side of him that's little known outside of China, where he's a celebrity. A cult of Ma reaches across the country and inspires almost fanatical loyalty among his employees and their families, who record his speeches and quote his sayings. Here, he's dressed as a punk rocker, performing for an enthusiastic audience of 20,000 Alibaba workers at a company anniversary celebration. You are so beautiful to me. The Chairman Ma show is now playing here in the U.S., bringing with it the potential of hundreds of millions of Chinese consumers for products made in America. So this is not Jack Ma's American invasion. This is not Google, Amazon, eBay, be afraid. We come to help, not invade. For example, bring the U.S.'s small business come to China. This is something that we can do better because we have 100 million buyers today, every day. We don't know, three years, 300 million? We started giving loans to small business. Within uh, 20 months, we have already given loans to over 20, uh, 260,000 small business. Average company only get a 5,000 US dollars. So you gave 260,000 loans, loans in 20 months? Yeah, 20 months. I yeah. don't want to give a big loan. We just give small, medium size. $8,000 yeah. is the limit. And your default rate on those loans is less than 1%. 1%. That's 0 amazing. 0.9. And you can do this because of the records that you keep on your, on your yeah. buyers and your sellers. Yeah. So you have, that's, that's really how you base the credit rating. Yeah, yeah. That's every move, every behavior you, you use on the internet. We, this behavior gives you the best rating system. And we can, we can know, we can borrow our $5,000 or $3,000 wide. 
depending on how reliable how I am. How reliable, who your customer is, what kind of things you buy, which address you send it to that area, and the value of the area, how much, and we can, the computer can know what's your pay capability. We want to make sure the small business survive. We want to make sure the young people, you know, this is all the young people that they are making the world changing. They are changing China. Alipay actually is a very unique business, business model. It's a service that because the buyers does not trust the sellers, and the sellers does not trust the buyers. So we build up escrow services. The buyer wire the money to Alipay, and we will inform the, the sellers. Yeah, we receive the money, please send the products. So the buyers see the product, if they're happy, we wire the money. Not happy, return the money, return the products. So when I started 80 years ago, everybody say, Jack, this is the most stupid model we've ever seen. Nobody would use it. And I say, I don't care whether this model is scientific, whether it's, it's fancy looking or not. As long as it works, it helps build up the trust. Today, we have more than 900 million registered accounts. On Alipay? Alipay. Almost every young people on the street, you see people using Alipay. Is counterfeiting and fake goods, is that one of the biggest problems that you have to deal with? One of the biggest threats to what you do? Yeah, this is the cancer of our business. If you don't control it, it's going to everywhere. And they lose trust? They lose trust of our side. Okay. And every day you hear, if you hear people about intellectual problems and problems, you got angry. So I did. I told the team, and this is, this is the cancer. If we do not solve the problem with the cure, but we are, we are just a website operator. Laura, if you sell fake products on the site, we find out and say, what can we do? We cannot arrest you. We cannot, we cannot uh, put you in the prison. What we can do is uh, close your shops. Two years ago, we have a big problem. A lot of people came to demonstrate in front of our office. They burned my pictures. They put my me in coffin and, and had a big demonstration in Hong Kong, but we are just a company. Mm. We don't have a police, we don't have a military, we don't have a prison, we don't have a judge. Are you happy with where you are now, or is it still too easy to get fake products off? We are making progress. Sense. We are the doctors that are helping to cure the cancer. But the cancer is so aggressive. You should, if you kill the doctor, the cancer is still there. You buy one fake product, you are angry. But for us, it's all our business. It's everything. It's everything. So, 60 minutes overtime. Our story is about Jack Ma, who's the founder of Alibaba, which just made history with the biggest public offering of its stock. And Wall Street had never seen anything quite like it. By now, you've probably heard of Alibaba, the Chinese internet giant that's able to reach millions upon millions of previously unreachable Chinese consumers. We were fortunate at 60 Minutes to actually spend more time with Jack Ma. Yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs> he said than any other journalist ever. Hi, Howard, how are you? I'm Howard Rosenberg, producer for 60 Minutes. My team laugh at me because I love to tell everyone that his longest interview before he sat down with us was 12 minutes with The Economist. <laughs> and he sat down with me in interviews for eight hours. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. People always ask me, Jack, Jesus, how could you make this company for 14 years with that quick? We work damn hard in 14, now, 14 years. After spending time with Jack Ma, do you think there's a difference between the American dream and the Chinese dream? What is the American dream, really? It's freedom. It's the freedom to, to be something and be someone and make something of your life beyond the circumstances into which you're born. And in China, as Jack Ma very eloquently says, you know, if you didn't have someone who was politically connected or you didn't have money or you weren't born into that. Mm. You had no hope. There was no point in dreaming because there was no dream. He's rich now, but he wasn't born into it. Part of the legend of Jack Ma is that he was malnourished as a child because mm. his family was so poor. 
So you look at somebody like that, you know, he literally holds his own with the ruling elite in China. Fifteen years ago, 18 founders in my apartment had a dream. He is proof that in a communist society, an entrepreneur can succeed. It's a pretty remarkable concept when you even think about it. We have uh, over 100 million people visiting the site, shopping every day coming. And uh, it's just uh, a beginning. Today is difficult. Tomorrow is more difficult. But the day of tomorrow is beautiful. He's omnipresent. There are pictures of him. His sayings are everywhere. He's quoted. They have him running on, uh, you know, on screens, television screens in the airport. Jack Ma is pretty unique and pretty quirky by American standards. You are so beautiful to me. Eyes everywhere, eyes everywhere. Stop. Sure? Stop. Okay, stop. Jack Ma did some card tricks for you. <laughs> Jack, where is this one going to be? You look both amused and skeptical. So you don't believe my trick, right? You give me the phone. I'm not an expert, but, um, but he was impressive. Is this the card? Yes, that's the card. You know that's the card. <laughs> I know that's the card. <laughs> There's 60 minutes footage of him posing with his employees, and you're, you're there. You're sort of in the background looking. I mean, he's like a rock star. Okay. He's like a rock star. And you know what? That's not manufactured. I mean, they no, are... No, it looks genuine. Eight-year anniversary of the company. They are crazy about him, and they are in awe of him. Everybody wanted um, to be near him. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. He has a curious way of making his employees happy. The mass weddings. He does. And, you know, we, we're looking at the footage, and yeah. we're talking about it as a team. And what is he doing? And why is he doing this? At first, when I heard about uh, the mass weddings, I thought, well, that sounds a bit cultish. I don't know of any business person in the U.S. who marries their employees. I think it's fair to say there are none. Really? Yeah. They should learn. They should learn? Yeah, they should learn, and they should make their employees happy. If they want to do it, let's do it for them. Bye. The way it works... I believe, is that couples get married in a variety of ceremonies. Then one day a year, they all go to a huge party that Jack stages at Alibaba headquarters. Why we do this? Yeah. Ten years ago, because the SARS, bird flu, all the employees in the company was quarantined. And I was locked in the room for ten days. But when, when I left the room, I said to myself, life is so short, so beautiful. Don't be so serious about the work. Enjoy the lives. This year we got uh, how many? 600 or 700 couples. And I'm you know, announcing, guys, today we are being married. Don't send children. Thank you. You love it. Oh, love it. 